This is my high power ball blaster that I've been working on the past couple videos. It's powered by three cheap brushless RC motors that give it a firing rate of more than 250 balls per second. And along with a vectoring function that I created in the last video, the ability to shoot around corners. Unfortunately, I'm struggling to get my blaster to shoot my balls where I want them shot. Stop! What kind of video do you think this is? Part of that is because I'm trying to guess how much to curve the balls using a joystick in one hand and this mess in the other. This setup was just for testing and it's not how I plan on using the vectoring system in the future. We're going to take care of this with a ball targeting system in the next video. Today we're going to fix a problem that I caused by buying these really cheap ESCs. A little bit of context on how this works. When a ball's fired, each of these motors is spinning at a slightly different velocity. The system acts sort of like a variable ratio planetary gear set. And this is what accelerates the balls and gives them their initial spin. Taking advantage of the Magnus effect allows us to curve the balls in any direction that we want. If you'd like to see more about how this system works, you're in luck. I made a video about it. To get these balls to go where I want, I need to have pretty precise control over each motor's velocity. And this is where the problem lies. I've got pretty good control up to a point when suddenly the balls start curving way more. And I'm really only able to control the first half of the ball's curve range. And it turns out it's these cheap ESCs combined with the motors I chose. The slowest I can get them to spin is 10,000 RPM. At that point, they shut off and the balls curve towards the stationary motor. To fix this, the first thing I thought about doing was modulating the throttle signal to approximate the lower RPMs. But, in a rare moment of self-reflection, I realized I'm the problem for being cheap. So instead, I bought these. These are the BG431 ESC1s, and I chose them for a few reasons. First, they're fairly high power, up to 6S and 40 amps. They have a built-in 5 volt supply that I can use to power the main controller. If we use ST's development environment and motor profiler, they can do something special called field-oriented control. Field-oriented control, also known as FOC, is the hot new way of controlling motors. And it's what's going to give us better low speed control. Inside these motors, FOC works by switching coil phases on and off at some incredibly high frequency, like 40,000 times per second. Varying the ratio of time that each coil is turned on lets us point the rotor to almost any angle that we want. It's basically the electrical version of being stuck in a pickle. I'll link to a better explanation of how FOC works down in the description. Okay, so after I installed ST's development environment, I discovered that the motor profiler is not available on Mac. So, I had to write the firmware myself. The firmware's not great, but it might be a good starting point for some of you, so I'll make it available for download on my Patreon. Let's take a quick look at some of the important things in the firmware. First, it's Arduino. I'm using a library called Simple FOC, and they did all of the heavy lifting. The first thing we need to do is tell the firmware about the motors that we're using. If we get these wrong, it won't work, and it could potentially damage your ESC or motor. If your motor manufacturer doesn't provide this information, there's still hope. We'll quickly go over some ways to either estimate or measure these values that describe our motor. The reason we need these values is because we're running a closed loop version of the firmware. And that requires feedback from the motor's position. And I'm way too cheap to buy an external sensor. So we're going to take advantage of something called back EMF. And I want to mention that it is definitely possible to use this firmware in open loop mode, but the ESCs and motors sometimes get a little bit toasty. Okay, the first value that we need to get is known as pole pairs, aka PP. This is the number of magnets on your rotor divided by two. Why divided by two? Well, each north pole magnet 
needs a south pole magnet on the opposite side of the rotor. This is the pair part of pole pairs. Just count the magnets on your rotor and then divide by two. The next value we need is phase resistance. To measure this, you'll need a milliometer or a fairly precise multimeter. If you're using a multimeter, set it to measure resistance and then measure across two phase wires and then divide that by two because in most cases these small motors are connected in a Y configuration and if we measure across two phase wires we just measure the resistance of two phases. The next thing we need to know is the motor KV. Ideally this is the motor RPM per volt so if we apply two volts and the motor spins at 500 RPM the KV is 500 divided by 2 or 250 KV. In reality, which is where I spend a lot of my time, KV is also affected by the motor's efficiency. So our formula actually looks like RPM divided by voltage times motor efficiency. It's also really important to know that the voltage in that formula is DC voltage. KV is something that's almost always included in your motor specifications. But if you can't find what it is, grab a drill, look up the maximum speed your drill spins at, or measure it, because sometimes manufacturers exaggerate. Stick your motor rotor. Rotor. I hardly know her. Stick your motor rotor in your drill. Set your multimeter to read AC volts. Connect two phases of your motor to your multimeter and then spin your motor as fast as your drill will go. My motor made 0.56 volts at 1613 RPM. If we pretend that my motor is 95% efficient, we get a KV of 3032 and the manufacturer says it's 2,200. Why is this so different? Well, remember when I said, it's also really important to know that the voltage in that formula is DC voltage. We just measured AC voltage. And to convert that to DC, we need to multiply by the square root of two, 1.414. This is called the root mean squared or RMS voltage. If we plug the new RMS voltage into the formula, we get an estimated KV of 2144, extremely close to the manufacturer's 2200. There's one last thing I want to mention about estimating KV. You'll find another formula floating around the internet. RPM divided by voltage times 1.3433. And there's this magic number, 1.3433. No one really ever explains what it is or where it came from. It's just the root of 2 times the 95% efficiency that we did before. Mystery solved. Inductance. This one is difficult to estimate or calculate, and it's rarely included in brushless motor specs. Well, at least for the motors that I buy. Unfortunately, we also really need it to make this work. There's one good way that I know of, and it's to measure it using an LCR. You may be able to estimate this using an inductance calculator, but I have not found an easy way to do it. Maybe someone down in the comments can let me know. This is my LCR. The first thing we need to do is make sure it's set to measure inductance at 40 kilohertz. 40 kilohertz because it's close enough to the 32 kilohertz that we'll be driving our motor at. All we need to do is connect two phases of our motor and it looks like we're getting a bit over seven micro Henry. Now there is something important that I forgot to do. You should remove your rotor because the magnets can affect the inductance measurement. Now we're getting nine micro Henry. And just like before, we want to divide this by two for the same reason that we divided the resistance reading. Now there are a few other things specific to your situation that you'll need to change. First is the voltage and current limits. These protect your motor and ESC. So start low, the PID values. Start with a P term and increase it gradually with very small changes. The output ramp. This is essentially your acceleration value. 
Higher values allow your motor to reach its target velocity more quickly. It is possible to try and accelerate the motors too quickly, and they'll make a terrible screaming sound. The last thing that we'll probably need adjusted is the velocity low pass filter. And this one you just kinda gotta mess with. Well, now that the firmware knows all about our setup, let's give it a few test shots to see if we fix the issue. Well, the results are looking pretty good. But after looking at those tests, I'm not sure if these two areas here are being caused by my inability to aim, or the joystick's resolution, or possibly I just wasted all that time and didn't fix it. I guess we'll find out in the next video. If you like what we did here today, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next video. Okay, thanks. Bye.